Recording is on. Okay, so this is just continuing on our devlog series, talking about building a get back CMS into the Plenty static site generator. I'm joined here with Jesse, and we're just going to talk about kind of next steps along this journey. So, so far, Jesse's gone through and he's uh, created a, a way that you can actually authenticate to GitLab. Uh, using Pixie. And then once you have the authenticated session, he set up some basic editing capabilities so you can change elements on the page and make things editable. Currently, it's not really saving anywhere besides local storage in the browser, but we're thinking through maybe next steps of both in integrating that work that he's done kind of outside of the Plenty ecosystem into a Plenty project, and then what kind of a saving um, experience might be like. Now, this probably isn't going to happen all at once, but we just want to talk about maybe next steps. So before doing that, I'm over here in the Plenty issue queue, and I'm looking through some of the issues. So we had some issues with getting node modules imported into the system. So um, Jesse had created this issue here. Um, that's nice and detailed about trying to get three JS in. I went and um, I updated uh, uh, Plenty to be able to work with most node modules, I believe. So um, the version 0.4.28 should have this. Um, and you can see here's an example of pulling um, D3 in, I believe, uh, is that the, yeah, D3 was the example. So here's just a basic example. It's a slow loading site. So um, it basically pulls the whole D3 in there. So it's, it's not very performant, but here you can see the example site here. If you take a look at my repository, um, there's another example here that was hanging out in GitHub for a while. Um, similar idea, pulling in 3.js. Um, and there's a couple different ways we talked about doing this. So I, I did a response with using Webpack as a bundler and then just putting that in your assets folder. I don't recommend using this. There actually are some issues still using this. So this might be something, Jesse, that you run into as you go to pull the, the work that you've done into Plenty. So that's OK. Let me know as we hit these issues. And I, I can I think I can fix this initial issue um, without a tremendous amount of work. But for now, um, I, I did an example here just showing that you could use NPM the way you would expect to do it and just import it like this. Um, and then I created a demo site here that, that kind of lives on GitLab as well, or GitHub, rather. So just I'm creating these little repositories on my personal account just to show off um, some of the things that you can do. So the bundling shouldn't be a problem because the CMS is already bundled in one or two files, the entry file and the actual CMS file. Perfect. OK, that's great. Um, so yeah, if the if the stuff that you're using is already kind of like a distribution of, of yeah. the project, then that that's great. Um, you might, I, I think you might run into something. Um, so if you're kind of directly importing a JS file, uh, Plenty might try to like do what we we call making a com like compiling the Svelte file and making a component mm. signature out of it. So you might get an error that looks like this error that I documented here. So you might see something along the lines that says can't render HTML component, and then you'll you'll see something that looks like these are component signatures here. So it'll mm. say something like can't get layouts content whatever the name of the thing that you're importing is. Yeah. Um, if you hit that, let me know and we can go uh, and fix it. Another way that you might be able to get around it in the near term is um, you can create uh, separate script tags that um, are mm. uh, like module. They, they You make them the type module, I believe. Um, and then you can kind of like export scripts directly. Let me just show you what that looks like. Um, it's probably something you, you might be familiar with, but maybe some of the people watching are not. So I'm just going to look at our starter um, for uh, plenty. So in the learner starter, I believe we do this. So in our layouts, uh, we have a folder called scripts. Mm -hmm. And in here we have things like little helper functions that we use, like make titles. So basically this takes just kind of like a path and, and makes it like a, like a title you could use for, um, you know, metadata and stuff. So you can see here, okay, this is how you do it. So you can create a script with a context module. And this allows you to just do like um, export uh, just code, just like JavaScript code mm -hmm. and import that into um, a different component without actually having any HTML or CSS or anything like that. Um, uh, related to it. So you don't actually have to pull the component, you can just pull the script. Does that make sense? Yeah. So using J uh, JS in Svelte as a like JavaScript module instead of a Svelte module. Like yeah, that's using the module that, module part of the only the top level yeah. part of the Svelte component. Potentially. So that might be a way to get around it for now. Yeah, yeah. so exactly. So you could take like all the, the like the JS bundle you have and you could put it into one of these these modules potentially mm -hmm. and import it that way. Um, but yeah, let me just try to do it the way you would normally do it. And if you hit the errors, then yeah. maybe we can just use it as a, a way to improve plenty overall. So um, I just wanted you to be aware of that. But yeah, um, and pro I'm probably, can I just use the script tag for importing that? 
CMS entry file can't lay out like actually uh, script tags. Can the layout use script tags? Like, Sorry, I'm not uh, sure if I'm following. Uh, the base layout. Can I use a script? Uh, script HTML. Script oh, sure. So, so like, oh, like, like in the actual like entry point, kind of like HTML yeah. file. Could you just put it here? Sure. Yep. Yeah, like I, something somewhere in the footer, like, like for in when I had the in the example file, the example dot HTML that mm -hmm. I have in the CMS project. I'm using script tag in at the end of the body. Yep. Because it's the least and differ it, so it's the least. Um, important mm -hmm, mm -hmm. load yep it's at, at the last in the load order that makes yeah. sense yeah it feels yeah for now like i'm not worried about like i'm not worried about feature completeness i'm not worried mm -hmm. about polish really just getting like the the basic um mechanics working so if you want to just dump everything into your top script tag that's fine if you want to like simplify this too and get rid of anything like dynamic components and just have a simple page here with some stuff that's fine too um, so you can see kind of here, this, this is the mm -hmm. example that I was talking about. So like, this is the, that utility function from mm -hmm. make titles that spelt that's in the scripts folder. And yeah, you can just basically import helper functions from that and then use helper functions, like make this a title, make the file name a title here for this. So yeah, mm -hmm. whatever way you want, if it makes your life easier to kind of separate it. So this, it's a little cleaner, do it. If, if not, just dump it in here. That's totally fine. Um, or, or like you said, you could just pop your script into, into your, uh, body tag potentially. Um, I don't know how Spelt deals with that. It probably is fine. Um, um, it probably has to be in assets so that it mm. goes into the out output folder. Okay. Yep. So that will, I think, we'll see. Let, okay. Yeah. If you do it directly in your in your HTML, I don't know if, I think it might work fine. Um, if you try to just pull something for, like here, if you try to get a, a script out of your assets folder, like something like this, mm. I think you'll run into... Um, you'll run into this issue that I was mentioning. You might you might get something yeah. like this, but that's okay. Let me know, because I think I can fix this pretty quickly and I probably should do it in due time anyways. So, mm. um, so yeah. So, okay. So I think in terms of like next steps, like getting the stuff, all the, the stuff that you've worked on into here, especially I think um, just getting the login process in there for now, like yeah. the editing stuff is is really nice and I'm, I'm super impressed with all the work you've done there. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, but for now I'm thinking as an approach, we might want to just get like, we're kind of like building the the bread of a sandwich, right? So like the, the login and then the saving through the Git, uh, lab API to make like a yep. commit to a, a repository. Those are like the bread. And then like the meat is going to be like all the editing, right? Like being able to edit titles and upload images and do all that fancy stuff and make it look yep. good. Um, but for now, like if we can get the login and then we can have the ability to edit anything, even in the grossest way and save to GitLab, mm -hmm. I think that's the huge win. So, so should I was we thinking about- have a uh, like a text editor with the JSON. Sure, you can have a text editor with the JSON for now. Like I really yeah. don't care too much what it looks like or how it feels. I, I think making sure that we have that full, okay, I'm logging in, I'm making an edit and like I belong to that repository and then it, it commits. Like if you can get that whole workflow, then I think that's awesome. So yeah. I was thinking about ways to do that. So one thing that I was thinking about, and again, these are just ideas. You don't have to take these as like, uh, I'm demanding this approach right now. I'm just mm -hmm. really trying to get the proof of concept stuff. But um, keep in mind, we have this this um, content magic prop. So this is basically a mm -hmm. little JSON blob that has everything to do with the current page, right? It's like the current page's file name. So like content file name, any of the fields that belong to that content. So like content.fields has all that. Um, and, and there's other just like metadata that belongs to whatever page that you're currently on. And as you switch pages, this magic prop changes. So you get the, the different content for that page, right? That's kind of how this whole Svelte component thing here works, right? We just pass that and then every every page and we actually kind of, um, you know, uh, send each one of these fields individually mm -hmm. to that component. So that way you can just like pull out, um, let me show an example just for people who are not sure what I'm talking about. Um, so in our layouts, we use a dynamic component to switch and show these different pages. So things like this. And since we spread those, um, uh, content dot fields into this, you can just like pull out any key that you have in your, your, um, content source. So for instance, you can just write, okay, give me the title, give me the description, give me the content because we spread, um, all, that fields object into here. Right. So, um, basically that, that content object is just, um, uh, is just like a JSON blob that we could use. Right. So the way I'm thinking about it is there's this project here. 
um, that Tan Lee had created um, called Svelte JSON Tree. And uh, so this basically just, I think you can just pass uh, this uh, Svelte component, essentially a, a JSON blob, and it will just display it here. Um, so we might be able to just like copy the relevant, um, so this is this is this. We actually might be able to copy the source because this would be a JSON, uh, sorry, a Svelte file, I believe. Okay, so there's a bunch of them. So there's a lot. I mean, again, um, we could copy this project just as the base Svelte files because we compile Svelte in Plenty itself. And you could just like put this as regular pages within a Plenty project potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could pass the JSON blob to, I don't know if we pass it to the root or wherever you pass it to. Um, and then uh, eventually, uh, essentially you would just display that JSON on the page that looks like this. Um, again, this might be more than you want to do because then this is, uh, of course, is not editable itself yet. Um, yeah. So we'd have to do something else to make you know some of these values editable this way. So I don't know if this is an approach you want to take, but it's just one way that I was thinking of doing it. That way you could see all the JSON that um, is being used to create, and then you could kind of edit these values like this. And then essentially, uh, then you're, you're thinking about saving at that point. Of course, this might be more work than it's worth at this point. I just wanted to throw an idea out there. So were you thinking that we would make every value in this JSON editable? I was thinking, yeah, just the yeah. values. Uh, again, this is not the important no, detail. For, for now, I was thinking, yeah. JSON like the editable, key, it's just the values. I was thinking, yeah, the keys would be fixed and yeah. just the values would be editable. Again, mm -hmm. like if it's easier, Jesse, to just forget about this JSON tree stuff for now and just like, okay, get the whole JSON blob and somehow put it in an editable form um, where you can edit in whatever, whatever is easiest, um, that's Maybe fine. It's easier to do, do a text editor that has the JSON, like for example, there was a code editor for a uh, HTML code editor named, was it? Mm -hmm. uh, what was it? I, I, I don't remember, but it was pretty good and easy to use. Okay. Yeah, I, that's totally fine. Whatever is easy, because yeah, this is you have to convert this into something that's edible. It might not be the best approach. Um, I'm not worried about the editing code, experience code right now. What is it? Code mirror. Code meter. Is that what you're saying? Mi mirror. Like reflection mirror. Oh, mirror. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. I, I've heard of code mirror actually. Yeah. Um, yep, yep. Um, with some of the other folks I was talking about with early on or maybe you mentioned this to me jesse when we no. had conversations way back in the day i, don't I, I think you so. did oh no oh. okay um it might have been uh, it might have been mateo morris um uh potentially mentioned to me i, I can't remember somebody mentioned this to me at one point saying that this might be a, a good way to do some editing um okay like for testing the saving process and so on it would yeah. be great okay yeah, great. So whatever works best for you, take the approach that works best. I'm not worried about the editing experience right now. Yeah. I'm more trying to get that full life cycle, right? Like log in, edit however it is right now, and then save it somewhere and make sure that actually happens. Yeah. Um, feel free to work off. This is like kind of the base project that we had at one point yeah. um, with like the, this is, just, this is nothing special. This is literally just like starting a, a bare plenty project and adding it. So um, work off this or don't work off this. Uh, this one is... Oh, this is a bear project, I believe. Okay, yeah. So there's there's not really much here. This is just like one of those projects that says hello. Mm -hmm. um, there's not really anything else in here. Uh, but yeah, if it's helpful to work off this, great. Um, or if there's a different way you want to do it, that's fine too. But this should, yep. this can be just a starting point. Um, so yeah, I would say like for this next week, just you know, getting getting kind of the the authentication workflow into a, a plenty of projects probably a good first step, and then. If you can, yeah, if you can get some kind of editing capability, however crude in there, awesome. And then start, we can start thinking about um, how that interaction with the GitLab API will be at that point. But I'm sure it's not all going to happen all at once. But I, I think that's the that's the approach. Yeah, sounds good. Great. Um, do you have any other thoughts or questions on on that? Um. Yeah, um, actually, I'm not so familiar with how Plenty works. So, mm -hmm. uh, does the content variable come from the JSON root from the content folder, or like does how it do we have a separate key in the file? 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So the JSON in the content folder gets yeah. wrapped up into a key called fields. And then we add oh. metadata, like, um, uh, we had metadata like what's the title, what's the file name, or like I, I can't, yeah. I actually don't remember off the top of my head all the, the metadata. There's not yeah. much. It's like file name, path, maybe um, if it has a pager, we add information about pagers to it. And then we wrap up all the content source into a field. You can actually go right now, we're wrapping all the content for the site into a single content.json, or uh, yeah. uh, content.json file. Um, or as we put it in a JS file, I can't remember. But the, the content, file has all the content in there. So you can kind of see the structure of what oh. that is. And then okay. the content prop takes out whatever page around base. We do it in our router. The router is kind of hidden yep. behind the scenes. Um, if you ever want to look at the router, you can do plenty eject router dot svelte. And that should um, mm -hmm. let you see the router in your, in your files. Um, but yeah, basically we pull out the current page and that that's what's in the content. So all content will have all of them in it and content will just have the page that you're on based on the route that you are in your browser. Yep. So you should be able to leverage that, I would think, right? Just say, okay, here's here's where we're at currently. Just pull that pull that content prop in, hopefully. Um, yeah. I'm sure as you get into it, you'll have yeah. questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm <really> sure too. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't hesitate to ping me. Um, mm -hmm. Again, like uh, obviously we talk on Discord and stuff, but uh, feel free also like as you hit issues and they're bugs or whatever, th throw it in the issue queue. That's totally cool too. Yep. And um, that'll that'll be easy that way i can take a look and, and maybe fix things pretty quick yeah i have no further further questions okay <laughs> cool yep all right then i think uh i think we're good for now i'll stop the recording